Hello everyone, this is Bradley. This is another tutorial talking about the important presets when working with splines. Today we are going to make two presets that follow the same principle. One is called follow spline and the other is called instancing on spline. Uh, a breakdown will be attached in the link for future reference how to build these presets in case they are being used in the live noting tutorial or even other tutorials. So let's start. So here is a very basic setup of three nodes. Two of them are presets that I have discussed in the past. One is not a generator and the other is a spline formation. And I use these three nodes to generate a knot and by changing the parameter it can be more kind of other interesting shape, I don't know. Uh, but it's something that you can play with once you know how to actually build this preset. Uh, today's topic is about actually how to use this spline. Uh, obviously you can generate a curve but it's not the only function of these two presets. Another way is potentially the follow the spline. So I have this follow spline nodes. If I put the splines into the position, and for example, I have a camera. Let's take the bevel depth to zero. And I have I ask the camera to look into a target in the center. And let's turn on this cube. So yeah, if I go to the camera view by changing this parameter, then I'm moving around. And it gives a very kind of interesting camera movement without any kind of keyframe or whatever other stuff. Otherwise, if you have to draw or animate by using the transform, it will make your life miserable. Uh, but you may also think that why do I actually need to use animation node to follow the spine uh, instead of using this follow pass constraint. So here's the thing. Uh, I can definitely ask the cube to be animated onto the position. But uh, what if I have another cube? Uh, for example, let's make a UV sphere and let's shrink its size. Uh, what if I have another object? Let's take a UV sphere. And I would like to have this UV sphere follow this cube. Uh, and it will be very easy to do the same thing by just offset this parameter. So if I take a float math and a float input. So for example, let's take a subtraction. Then I can easily generate kind of offsets of this setup. And just to think about if you're doing, you, you can also doing all these kind of things using drivers. But I think since everything is in Node, sometimes it's kind of might be more efficient and a more easy way to work with this. And this is my ideology about the reason that you're going to use the, the node instead of constraint. Something like that. And again, also this is a procedural and uh, because you're using nodes, maybe you're working with multiple objects, maybe 100 objects, and you, I'm not going to add constraint to 100 objects and uh, ask them to follow the same path or whatever. So, so there are many advantages that you're using nodes instead of constraint. There is also another moment uh, that you might would like to instance objects on the splines. For example, let's take, uh, I, I have already taken the cubes. So for example, I'm instancing cubes on these spines. And it generates a lot of something interesting. Actually, this is more interesting than I initially thought, but it's just how it works. So this is it, and you can definitely increase the amount of cubes. Uh, I think this is something cool. Very, very cool. And here's the thing that um, the basic principle of these two kind of nodes are very the same, are very the same. They basically use the uh, they value the spline. So if you do not hit this icon, then it's basically the full of the spline. And if you hit this plus icon, it's instancing on the spline. The issue is it only output the location, tangent, and normals. Uh, if you're only, only using the location, then it will only tell the location and you will not get the orientation of all these cubes or the orientation of the cameras very well as the time goes. And that's why I use the precept to accomplish it such a way easier for you. And I think it's kind of very useful and very interesting. So let's start to build our preset. So firstly, let's 
take a group input because each subprogram will be run once each time I've, as I'm duplicating that. Um, and then I'm going to just simply duplicate the DCA value this one. Alt P to take that out from the frame. I'm going to put the spline and the parameter to the place. Uh, one thing I have to remind you because there's two type to evaluate a spline. Uh, and there is a proposal to add a third way to evaluate the spline. But you once it has been a preset, you cannot change that within the, the node group. So instead, I'm basically just duplicating the spline's change the type and use the same parameter over and over again. This is the way to do that. I don't think this is really efficient, but uh, this is how it works. So maybe there is a better solution or I don't know. But at least it works. This is the thing I can tell. And uh, here's uh, one important thing is sometimes uh, the spine is looping or you want the movement to loop. So here I'm going to take a floats math and uh, set the type to modulo. I've explained it many times about the modulo. I don't want to explain that again. But the basic idea is it will all, so once you hit one, it will return zero in this case. And uh, for example, if you get to two, then it will again returns to zero and over and over again. So basically repeat it itself between zero and one regardless say so this is the way that you can loop by cycling through these spines instead of just hitting the end because this parameter basically only goes between zero and the one from the beginning to the end this is how it works then i'm going to compose the matrix i'm using the location for the translation but i need to define the rotation scale I personally didn't add this function like a connected radius to the scale. But uh, maybe you can do this for your own. But this is not something I would like to touch at this moment. I'm only going to talk about the rotation. Uh, for the rotation, it's basically direction to rotation. And I'm going to ask all these objects to face on the axis. But I'm also going to add a normal to the guide. Uh, the whole issue is that, so for example, if I have a cone, and now this z axis is looking up, but if I don't have a guide to define its x and y axis, so for example, let's turn on the axis. So if I do not specifically define the x and y, then even if I'm rotating this object, it's still looking up to the Z is still looking up, but X, Y is obviously not in the correct position. And that's why I put the normals into the guide so that you have an additional notion about where your X and Y should look at, so something like that. So now I compose the matrix and basically this is done. Uh, you just output this node. Then you can name that as a uniform matrix. And uh, definitely you can take another evaluate splines, duplicate these two nodes. Uh, one thing to think is that sometimes I don't want my object to cycle on this path. Um, so maybe you would like to add a switch. Let's take a boolean and let's take a switch. So if you check this box, then I will use the module. If you don't check the box, then it will use the parameter only. I think uh, this is basically good. And then I have this invoke node. Let's just call that photo 
by tutorial and then let's take a object matrix output actually object matrix output and then let's take our cameras to the place and I need the, the spline and then by changing this parameter yeah now the camera is moving very well and then let's definitely delete this track too so that to see the orientation of our cameras yeah it looks pretty well the it's always looking at the tangents of the spine. Another question is, uh, you cannot go into the, this preset. If you use this as a preset, you cannot go into that and change the direction to rotation. So what if I would like to change that looking at Y or something like that? So here you have to do some additional stuff like trans uh, matrix math. And then make a rotation matrix and then rotate at 90 degree. So this is the way that I will, I will work. And if this is always a node that I'm going to use, then I was thinking why not just to put this matrix math into the place. The good part of this such kind of node is even if you do not input anything, it will still get a very correct output. It will just output the same thing. So now I have a transformation. So let's just take a transformation. So basically save an additional node if you would like to change this direction. So you can change that 90, 90. So maybe this is something that you would like to do. I don't know. But this is definitely doable. This, this is the thing I can say. And for the instance on spline, it's basically the same thing. That's it. I'm going to take a group input. In this time I'm going to change the type to the evaluate range and still do the same thing among starts and in fact I think there is nothing really new it still kind of duplicates and the sharing the same inputs and do the basically exactly the same thing it's basically really the same and you output the matrices and it's basically not something hard to understand I suppose so I think this tutorial is done and definitely you can put another matrix math to the place and then solve all the problem so I think uh, that's it so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and these two presets are kind of useful to you and I'll probably see you next time bye bye